This video is going to talk about how the concentration of a salt solution is related to a property known as electrical conductivity. Before we talk about electrical conductivity, we need to talk about salts and what they do when they dissolve in water. Here's a picture of a close-up of sodium chloride crystals, otherwise known as table salt. On the atomic scale, salt looks something like this. Salt consists of sodium and chloride ions that attract each other, and they attract each other in this big array that's known as a lattice. So when we put this in water, it does something. So here's a simulator that shows some water and some salt up here. We all know that we can dissolve salt in water. We can make salt water. So as I dissolve this in here, you can see that the concentration of the salt is going up. On the atomic scale, there's something going on that isn't as obvious to our eyes. So here's some sodium chloride. When I put it into water, you see that the sodium and the chloride ions separate from each other. So salt water is actually a mixture of sodium ions and chloride ions. The reason that this happens has to do with water. So here's a picture of a bunch of water molecules jiggling around in water. Now, if I add some salt to it, so here's my sodium chloride stuck together in a solid, and I drop it in, you can see that it gets pulled apart. So this isn't happening on its own. Water is actually involved in this process. Water is a molecule that has an end that's a little negative and another end that's a little bit positive. Because of that oppositely charged ends, it's able to pull apart the sodium and the chloride ions and surround them. So that's why when salt goes into water, it breaks up. Now the word for this is the opposite of the word associate. This is known as dissociate. So when sodium chloride goes into water, it dissociates into ions. Let's go back to our scale. I'm gonna reset this. Okay, so now we just have pure water again. We have a meter right here. This is called a conductivity meter. And basically what it is, is it has a battery with a light bulb. And if there's something in between these two electrodes that can conduct electricity, it will allow the electrical current to flow and that will light up the battery. So as you can see, when the conductivity meter is sitting in water, the light bulb is not lit up. So that must mean that water does not conduct electricity very well. If I then take some salt and dissolve it in water, you can see that the light bulb lights up. Now we know that salt dissociates into ions when it goes into water. So it stands to reason that it must be those ions that's carrying the electrical current. Now, another property is that if I add more salt, you can see that the light bulb is getting brighter. So how well the electrical current is getting transferred must depend on how many ions are in the water. So in lab, you're going to be measuring electrical conductivity using a probe. So on the simulator we just looked at, there was a part that we submerged in solution. The conductivity probe you're going to work with is set up in a similar way. This part, this tip, gets submerged into the solution, and there's a hole in between that allows the solution to move back and forth. Now on the probe, you have this switch. This is, lets you sweat, set the, um, the range of the readings and the lab will tell you what to set that range to. The tip of the probe, what's important to know is that this part must be totally under the solution. So whatever you put the probe into the solution, it should, this part should be totally covered up. Now you can't really see it, but on either side here, there's a piece of graphite. Those are the two electrodes um, that will uh, and the solution in between will conduct electricity through. If you want to learn more about how the conductivity probe actually works, there's going to be this handout in lab, so you can read that if you'd like. On the lab quest, the conductivity is going to be shown to you with a number and then this unit right here. So let's talk about this unit. 
The unit is known as microsiemens per centimeter. The unit of electrical conductance is known as a siemen. The centimeter comes from the fact that this number depends on how far apart these electrodes are. Now the numbers we're going to be working with today are pretty small, so we're going to be working on the micro semen level, where one micro semen equals one times 10 to the minus six siemens. The range goes from zero to 20,000, where a higher number means a higher electrical conductivity. It means that the solution is conducting electricity better. Any number outside of 20,000, anything above that, is not going to be a reliable reading. So this number is a reflection of how many ions are in the solution. As the number of ions goes up, the electrical conductivity goes up. And this is directly proportional. So if the number of ions goes up by a certain amount, the conductivity changes by a certain amount. They're directly proportional. One goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. So because they're proportional, we can graph them against each other. So we have ion concentration on the x-axis, and we have electrical conductivity on the y-axis. As the ion concentration goes up, conductivity goes up, and because they're directly proportional, we get a straight line. We can determine what the slope of the straight line is, and the reason that's useful is because you can then measure the conductivity of a solution and use the slope to calculate what the ion concentration is. So an example of that graph that we just looked at is this. This will be in your lab handout. This is a graph of the salinity of water. So it's how much salt is dissolved in the water. So it's a reflection of how many ions are in the water. As that goes up, you can see that the conductivity goes up. So this maxes out at 20,000. Any readings above that are not reliable. And it's a straight line. So we have a slope here. What the slope is saying is that if I change the salinity, the amount of ion concentration, by one molarity, it changes the electrical conductivity by 1.29 times 10 to the fifth microsiemens per centimeter. 